Pop quiz, what are these? These are what are commonly known as featherboard or fingerboards. And what they do is allow you to hold your material down to the table as well as the fence of either your router table or your table saw so that you can get a very consistent cut on small pieces without having to get your fingers in the way. These I just made out of scrap wood on my table saw. But you can also purchase them. This type actually came with my router table. To set up your fingerboards to hold the material on your table saw, you're gonna clamp one to the fence and one to the table. First thing you wanna do is take the piece that you intend to cut with the blade out of the way and set it there to set your fingerboards onto so that you can set them up in the perfect place to hold them while you cut your pieces of wood. What you wanna do is tighten down your clamp and then give it a little like that so that it's tight. You can push it through this way, but you can't push pull it back through. See, that's pretty tight right there. These feather boards allow the material to go through your saw this way, but they don't allow it to come back at you. Each one of these fingers or feathers flexes. So if the material tried to come back at you, it would flex and the each finger would stop it. The next one you wanna clamp down to the table, right about the same area as the one on top. So they can work together to not only keep the material down on the table, but against the fence. If you're using a short board like this, You'll have to do what I do, just place a longer piece of wood over it, and clamp that down to your table as well to hold this into position. Once you've got both feather boards clamped firmly down, then you're able to raise your saw blade, turn it on and go ahead and make your cut. Keep in mind when you're using finger boards on a table saw that are that close together, it's gonna be difficult to try to get something in there to push the piece through. So it is advisable when using fingerboards like that to go ahead and give it the reach around. That is, go on the opposite side of the saw, pull it towards you with both hands. The fingerboards will stop it from kicking back. Now on the router table, you could use the same homemade ones and just clamp them just like I did the table saw, or you could get a router table that already has these ones that clamp themselves with the knobs slide in and out and are adjustable height wise too. One clamps to this and one clamps to this and they just simply tighten up. You don't have to use anything additional to hold them firmly in position. Once you get them set, you're able to pass your molding through and pull it out the other side and have a nice consistent cut without having to miss anything when you're using your router bit, depending on what router bit you're using and how small your molding is. With this setup here, I'm able to make very small moldings come out perfect. To set it up on your router table, again, you wanna take the piece that you're gonna use and put it into position. Usually with the router table, I'll place these over the blade about halfway and then tighten them up. Remember that when you tighten up your feather boards, to give them just a slight push into the material so that they hold properly. Once your fingerboards are tight, you're ready to push the molding through. Don't forget to always wear eye protection and ear protection. And there we have our piece of molding that's nice and consistent all the way down it. It hasn't traveled away. We can count on that the size here is gonna be consistent as well as the groove. And if you make sure you don't stop when you're pushing a piece through the router, you'll make sure you don't get any burn marks. It's also a good idea if you're gonna be doing a lot more than just a sample for a video, to make sure that you hook up your router table to some sort of dust collection, whether it's a shop vac or dust collector.